Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to all of you, including Kirk Stephenson, Miranda Janelle, That Charlie Dude, and brand new patrons, Matt, Leo, and Brad. Yay! <laughs> On this episode of DTNS, Google's second antitrust trial kicks off, and Apple announces new watches, AirPod, AirPods, and iPhones. All three. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, September 9th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. From the edge of Atlanta, I'm Nika Monfort. From the suburbs of Atlanta, this is Terrence Gaines. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Oh, my friends, uh, if you're looking for Sarah Lane, she will be on Apple Vision Show with Eileen Rivera, so you can get all kinds of views on the Apple announcement today. Uh, Nika and Terrence, thanks for joining us. Let's get right into it with the Quick Hits. Sony will conduct a nine-minute technical presentation of the PlayStation 5 Pro on Tuesday. This is the first official information we'll be hearing about it. Uh, that will be September 10th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. The Pro version of the PlayStation is expected to offer a more powerful GPU and arrive in December. During its earnings call, Sono said it would delay two hardware products from launching while it works on fixing its new app that has come under some heavy, heavy criticism from its users. Bloomberg's Mike Gurman says sources say one of two hardware devices is a TV set-top box similar to Roku. That's interesting. Huawei is launching a trifold Mate XT phone Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. China time, but it already opened pre-orders Saturday and received 2.7 million of them. Now, pre-orders is a bit of a strong word since we don't even know what the price is until they make the announcement later today, uh, but it still shows strong interest and the device is set to go on sale officially the same day as all the Apple stuff when it goes on sale, September 20th. Nanoleaf launched a smart light switch for just $30 shipping in October. The Sense Plus Smart Wireless Quote Anywhere switch uses NanoLeaf's own lightweight protocol instead of the standard uh, thread use with Matter devices. It has um, standard lighting controls and two configurable buttons. You can assign functions uh, to in uh, NanoLeaf's app or through Matter compatible systems like Apple Home and Samsung SmartThings. Scientists at ETH Zurich and the Max Planck Institute have developed a robotic leg that uses muscles instead of using motors. The leg can perform complex movements like jumping and adapting faster to uneven surfaces. So instead of an electromagnetic motor to operate the joints, the scientists use electrohydraulic actuators attached by wires that mimic tendons. The actuators are just plastic bags filled with oil, and you've got a conductive electrode on each side of the bag. Current through the electrodes causes static electricity that makes the electrodes attach to each other. That compresses the bag, so like a muscle compresses. Manipulating the voltage can give you control over how much it compresses and how much the leg actually moves. The voltage is controlled by software, which can adapt as it's walking around. They, th they think uh, one of the uses for this could be for rescue robots to be able to get into uneven surfaces and unusual terrains. Let's not get to Apple right away, because if it wasn't for Apple, the big story today would be the beginning of the second big antitrust trial in the United States against Google. U.S. District Judge Leonie Brinkema will hear the case in Northern Virginia. Uh, this is a bench trial, so no jury. That's normal with antitrust cases, although the DOD tried to make it into a jury trial. They, they weren't successful. Opening statements take place Monday. The trial itself is expected to last four weeks. And it is about Google's ad business. And this is a little confusing because the other antitrust trial that has already concluded was about search ads, but it was about Google abusing its position in search to favor its business in ads on search. This is about Google's ad business entirely. And some of you may not realize that Google has a very big ad business. Obviously, they have a business of placing ads on their own products, but they also operate a marketplace for buying and placing ads by Google on other websites. And they operate something called Ad Manager. Uh, the Ad Manager is made up of an exchange. People can sell their own space directly in real time to the highest bidder using Google's tech 
So it's slightly different. It's not Google placing the ad. It's you using Google's tech to do your own ad placement. Uh, manager lets sites manage their direct sales and ad serving. Uh, and then there's marketing platform for planning out your campaigns and analytics for seeing how they did. So basically all the aspects of advertising Google has technology for. Uh, Google can sell you an ad on its own stuff, sell you ads it places on other people's stuff, sell sites the tech to buy and sell their own ads and place them on their own sites, as well as tools for advertisers to plan and measure the effectiveness of their campaigns. That's almost everything you can do in advertising. So the DOJ accuses Google of abusing its market position to prevent rivals from competing with it on technology and locking web publishers into its own offerings so that they won't go use somebody else's technology. The Department of Justice is specifically asking for Google to spin out Ad Manager. That's the one that lets sites use Google tech to operate their own ad placement and ad selling. Google's defense is that it's not even the whole ad market anymore. That, yeah, you can use all this stuff yourself, but if you're an advertiser, you can go buy ads and apps through Apple. You can buy ads on Amazon. You can buy ads through Threads and Facebook and connected TVs, places where Google is not dominant. Uh, this trial is not going to wrap up anytime soon. It's going to take years. By comparison, that other antitrust case that we talked about was decided against Google, but Judge Amit Mehta has said he will determine the remedy for that next August. <laughs> so we're gonna have to wait till next August to find out whether he's gonna order Google to break itself up, and then Google's gonna appeal. So that's not even gonna happen next August. So this is all gonna take a long time. Given that we really won't see anything happen to Google for a few years, Terrence, uh, you know, what, what do you expect to happen in this trial? Well, that's what I was gonna ask. Um, well, my point I was going to make was, I think Google is probably happy that none of this will really quote unquote hit the fan for another couple of years or so. So I guess my question was going to be, is got a Google waiting on this to die down? But or since this is a federal government case, it really won't go anywhere outside of just out of the public's mind until it spins all back up. So I guess the question is, uh, to, to answer your question, I think Google really just kind of stays as quiet as possible <laughs> until this stuff spins back up. Because since this just can't die down because it is a government case, my assumption is something's going to happen. But until then, I think we're going to change the channel until this pops back up. Yeah, we're going to be real excited about whatever happens in court over the next four weeks. And then we're going to forget about it for years. That, that, that seems likely. Nika, what do you think? So I'm glad you gave the context up front because I was confused. I was like, didn't they already have a case exactly uh -huh. like this? And so to hear the nuance of, of the difference between the two, even though they're all about search and they're about ad, it's on two different fronts. Again, I, I agree with you both. I think it's the hot topic now. Um, it'll be the hot topic while it's in the news. Then it'll fade away. No one will give a thought about it. It won't be that big of a deal. Then when it comes back again, everybody's like, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, Google is this, Google is that. And it's one of those things where, you know, I, I don't know what type of effect this will actually have on on google these we we hear these big cases against tech companies and i know um the the u.s government was uh, on a on a huge run you know fighting you know big tech companies and you know a lot of it just kind of languishes and, and and falls by the wayside so google's probably happy you know that this is gonna be drawn out and they don't have to really face it so much um and you know again out of sight out of mind people lose interest very quickly these days especially yeah. in something like this and since yeah. this is so confusing, it may most people just may not even pay attention to it because what's different between this case to this case? And the other one. What's different yeah. and what's going mm -hmm. on? Uh, never mind, forget about it. Yeah, and it's about <laughs> advertising. About it. yeah. It's not like people love advertisers, so they're going to be less sympathetic uh, right. in this right. particular case. Uh, yeah, the two things I'll say is just remember this is about tech that Google sells to people for them to operate their own advertising. This is not about Google placing advertising even. Uh, that, that's what the DOJ is going after. Uh, and that reminds us all that 
really who we're suing here is not Google, the search engine that started in the 90s. They're suing DoubleClick. Remember, Google bought DoubleClick. Everyone thought DoubleClick was evil until Google bought them, and then they just kind of faded from memory. Uh, but uh, you, the, the, that is who they're suing here, is the part of Google that is the successor of DoubleClick, if, if the name DoubleClick means anything to you. Because if you have that's a where the money is. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. That is where most all of Google's money is. That is a right. very good point. Uh, if you have a thought about something on the show, but you don't know our email address, here it is. You can email us feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Let's get into the Apple announcements. Uh, we are going to start with the iPhones. Almost all the new features this time are coming to the base models, the iPhone 16 and 16 Plus. They stay 6.1 and 6.7 inches, but they get the action button. Previously, you only had that on the 15 Pros. They get the A18 chip. So not an older generation that's that's marginally upgraded. They're getting the A18. There is a different chip in the Pros this time, but it is also an A18. Uh, these are built on a three nanometer process. They are supposedly 30% faster than the iPhone 15. They get hardware accelerated ray tracing, which could be good for gaming. 30% higher sustained performance. One of the stars was the side camera control haptic button. It's basically like a little touchpad on the side of your phone. Uh, you can click it to launch the camera. You can tap it again to take a photo. You can hold it for video. It's sapphire glass flush to the surface, so the clicking is really haptics. A lighter press, if you just brush it, uh, does a clean preview, brings up overlay for tools. You can tap lightly twice to see other controls. Apps like Snapchat are going to take advantage of this. It'll do 4K60 video in Dolby Vision. You can share live video with a 911 dispatcher. The iPhone 16 starts at $799. The 16 Plus starts at $899. Those are both at 128 gigabytes of storage. You're going to pay more if you want more storage. You can pre-order them starting Friday, and they will ship starting September 20th. Nika, before we get to the pros, what's your impression of the base model iPhone 16? I think users who um, like the base model phones, I think they are probably the real winners of this announcement because they're getting a whole lot of tech that was previously used only in the pro line, but now they're getting it um, in the cheaper version of, of the of the standard line. So um, kudos to them. They're going to get some, some really great upgrades if you don't. Uh, like the pro line or can't afford the pro line or it's it, that type of thing. But um, you got some new colors. Great. Um, and, I, <laughs> and I think for the most part, uh, they are getting um, some of the, the, the typical pro features um, that they that they didn't have access to before. So I think of all of the, the announcement uh, when it comes to the phone, I think people who are on the 16 and the 16 plus um, side of the house, um, they probably got the biggest the biggest um, upgrade. Yeah. yeah. And they're doing some fun things with the cameras too. Yeah. Terrence, what do you think? Well, no, I was just going to say, you know, I think Apple, my speculation is Apple has finally just said, okay, there's the regular devices. There's the pro devices. We're not going to try to, you know, uh, market or advertise any special features to make these things different. You know, as a consumer, the difference between these price, these uh, devices are the price. So it's up to you if you want to get an entry level model and save you a couple hundred bucks or you want to go all out and get the latest and greatest top of the line. You can do that, but we're not going to try to push this device is better because of these features versus this. We all kind of know if you spend a little bit more money, you get a little bit better, but that's about it. Yeah, it, fe it feels like they're really in a corner because they can't differentiate on the CPU power as much because they want all of these phones to run Apple intelligence. Apple mm -hmm. intelligence is a service. They're pivoting to services. Uh, and so you, you need the base model iPhone 16 to be able to access and run Apple intelligence locally, which means you need a powerful CPU. So it does really come down to, oh, this one has two camera sensors. Apple tried to say, oh, but we're fusing two of them together. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's almost like you have four lenses and, and only two sensors. Uh, I'll ask camera people what they think of that. But, you know, that is the biggest hardware difference I can see. Uh, and, yeah, this the CPU here is a tiny bit 
uh, lower performance than the iPhone Pro. Let's actually move on to that. iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max. Bigger screens in these, too. That's another big difference. 6.3 inch in the Pro, 6.9 inch in the Max. Apple says these are the thinnest bezels on any Apple product ever. Uh, and the brown iPhone is real. Uh, there are four metal finishes, black, white, natural, and desert Desert is kind of a bronze. Looks better than a lot of those rumors did. Uh, the A18 Pro is the three nanometer processor in this. So it has a 16 core neural engine, 17% increase in memory bandwidth, 35 tops, and a six core GPU compared to the regular iPhone 16's uh, five core GPU. Also gets the new camera control haptic button, a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera, that's new on the Pro. Uh, ProRes video recording, uh, faster USB 3 speeds, twice the encoding speed for video, they claim. And a couple of features that aren't coming to the base model. Audio mix can isolate up to three people talking from background elements. Uh, and voice memos will be able to emulate two-track recording. And they demonstrated it with someone singing along while they played music off their voice memo and then recording it together and being able to separate the voice track from the background music. Uh, they also announced some MagSafe updates. There are some cases for the pros that'll have camera controls in them, faster charging and Qi 2 in those cases as well. First mention of Qi 2 uh, instead of just MagSafe. The Pro starts at $999 for 128 gigabytes and 1100 $199 for the Pro Max, which base model is 256 gigabytes. Like the iPhone 16, these pre-order Friday, available September 20th. I mean, we kind of touched on some of the differences here, Nika, but any other additional thoughts on the Pro? No, I think what... Um I think the thing that stood out to me the most is typically when we hear about the Pro and the Pro Max, the difference is usually on the cameras. There really wasn't a lot of talk on the difference, uh, the differences between the 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max. It, it seems to me that the biggest difference is, you know, just the size. They both get a size bump, but it seems to me the biggest difference between both of these are, are just the size. Um, it doesn't seem like any of the hardware is unless I missed it, is is drastically different between the Pro and the Pro Max. It seems like it's got faster USB speeds, mm -hmm. maybe some additional uh, camera features that you won't find on the regular. You but got four sensors instead, or three sensors instead of two. I guess. Right. Oh, it's, okay. Yeah. It, like you say, camera stuff, but it's not like, like I mentioned, not wow in your face camera stuff. To it's where nominal are, changes. And to where people are really going to say, oh, I want the Pro or the Pro Max over the regular ones. But I'm curious, uh, Nika, is this the, the gold that you're looking for? If, you know, since we're one half of the Snob OS cast, we're always talking about the uh, vice upgrades. And Nika's always uh, the gold. She's always the gold. Is this the right color or is this awesome? This is the, this is the right color because it's now, you know, I'm all about the, the aesthetic. I like mm -hmm. my devices to match. So it looks like now we'll talk about watches a little bit later, but we're now looking like we're closer to on par with these colors when it comes to phones and watches. So we're, I think we're close. I think all we're right. really close. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think the pro, Better camera, 4K 120 uh, capture, Dolby Vision and Pro Res. You know, there's a couple of things if you're really into it. Uh, studio quality mics, four studio quality mics, they say, spatial audio capture. Uh, but overall, yeah, some very pro-oriented hardware features, but not massive differences, like you're saying, Nika. Uh, these are all... They talked a lot about Apple intelligence. Almost none of it was new. It was all reiterating things we already heard at WWDC. Uh, we did find out that Apple intelligence will launch in beta in October for U.S. English, uh, localized English, so Australia, New Zealand, UK, et cetera, coming in December, and Chinese, French, Japanese, and Spanish coming next year. Let's move on to the Apple Watch Series 10, a uh, thinner 9.7 millimeter uh, thick uh, watch. The case uh, is a little bigger, or I'm sorry, the screen is a little bigger. So you got a thinner case, but a bigger screen. They have some wide angle OLED, 50% brighter from angles. So it's easier to take a look at it. They'll be updating it once every second because the OLED is more efficient instead of once every minute. So if you are holding it down and it's not active, you can actually see it update more, more frequently. A new jet black color, along with rose gold and silver aluminum. There's also the polished grade five 
titanium models that have stainless steel, natural, gold, or gray. Uh, faster charging, 80% charging in 30 minutes. Smaller speaker, but can now play music and podcasts. Do not do this, but it can play music and podcasts. <laughs> At least don't, speak. <laughs> don't do it if you're around other people. Uh, S10 chip inside with a four core neural engine. So it can uh, suppress background noise using a new neural network on device. Uh, and the big one was sleep apnea detection. That is based on motion from the accelerometer. Uh, it can create at your request, a report that you can hand over to your doctor that says, hey, it looks like I might have sleep apnea. Do I need to get this treated? And fitness, fitness users will welcome a built-in depth gauge, something you had on the Ultra, uh, now available on the Series 10. You can order the Series 10 right now, uh, and it will ship September 20th, $399 for the regular version, $499 if you want the data, you know, GPS and, and uh, cellular data built in. Is this, is this going to wrap around your wrist, Nika? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I'm probably going to go with the titanium in gold. Um, I'm currently on the, I think, the Watch 8. I did an upgrade to the 9 because I was hoping uh, to get a, a redesign on the 10. Uh, I guess technically we did, um, being that it's thinner, but it, it, it still looks the same. So um, I think, yeah, I'll probably pick this up. Yeah, I'm actually, I think Eileen's going to, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm not really sure. Um, one of the reasons why I passed on the Apple Watch Ultra because they stuck with that that gray color, mm -hmm. you know. But now with the Apple Watch 10 that actually has a smaller bezel and a brighter screen, uh, and it actually has that brand new, you said black titanium. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always mm -hmm. picked a bunch of black uh, devices. My iPhone's black, my Apple Watch is black. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to opt for the Apple well, Watch Ultra 2 because of reasons coming up. Yeah, no, no we go ahead. But the Apple only Watch. thing to mention about the uh, Apple Watch Ultra is there is a satin black finish coming. Mm -hmm. So they, they took away the easy decision. Now you you can get it in black on either one. Yep. Now, now I don't know. Now, now it's, it's back to the drawing board. I was for sure going to get another Apple Watch 10. And now I make it that Ultra 2 now, now that you've mentioned they've got that black color. Yeah. And that's pretty much the only Apple Watch Ultra uh, thing. There's a new Hermes band and a watch face called Maritime. Uh, let's move on to the AirPods. The AirPods 4 are a legit brand new generation of AirPods with an H2 chip. They say they're the most comfortable yet. These are the base model AirPods, but they are bringing personalized spatial audio. The ability with the on-device neural engine to nod to answer yes to Siri or shake your head to say no to Siri. I'm very curious how it's going to work when you're jogging and your head just <laughs> nods naturally. Uh, you can click on the stems to play pause music, something you could do with the pro. Now you can do on the regular model, a USB-C case with 30 hours of battery life. Uh, and you can pay a little extra in the base model AirPods 4, not the pros, and get active noise cancellation, transparency, adaptive audio, and conversation awareness. So the differentiation between the AirPods 4 and the pros is closing. Uh, the case can use an Apple Watch charger or a Qi charger. Uh, it also has a Find My speaker in it now. Starts at $129 without the active noise cancellation or $179 with it. You can pre-order those now, available September 20th. We also got new AirPods Max with USB-C and new colors, including a purple. Those are $549 as they were, pre-order now available September 20th. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and mention the AirPods Pro too, because it's not new hardware. What it gets is hearing assistance updates. So hearing protection reduces loud noises. So if you wear them at a concert, it'll protect your ears like wearing earplugs, uh, but you'll be able to hear the music very well, they say. There is a five minute certified hearing test where you can just tap when you hear tones and it can test your hearing and then you can hand that over to a doctor. And the big one, they can be used as clinical grade hearing aids 
after you do that hearing test. Uh, so they'll be customized to your hearing profile, works on all sound sources, both external around you and connected sources like your TV or your phone. FDA clearance for that coming soon, uh, 100 plus regions around the world, so not just the US. And that is all coming in a software update to the existing AirPods Pro 2. So to recap, AirPods Pro 2 get this hearing assistance in a software update. So if you already have AirPods Pro 2, you'll get it. AirPods Mac gets new, Max get new colors, and the AirPods 4 or are getting all the active noise cancellation if you pay a little extra. Nika, any of these turn your head? So similar to the iPhone uh, 16, it seems as if the base model is getting the biggest upgrade. Yeah. So it seems like Apple is really kind of being a little conscious about people's pockets uh, right now because it seems to me that the base models of both the iPhones and the AirPods are getting the biggest upgrade. Um, I'm a little disappointed. Um, I, I think I've mentioned it before. I've been wanting to get some AirPods Max and I was hoping that we'd get a refresh. We finally get a refresh. And the only thing it does is gives us a USB-C port and some new colors. So um, I'm not sure uh, if I will be picking up uh, any new AirPods right now. I think uh, my current pros are are fine. Uh, so Those purple yeah. ones are pretty um, nice though. <laughs> So, you know, I have I have my aesthetic thing going. So I think the ones that are kind of like the weight that look kind of like a light gold, if I were to get anything, it would be the the max in, in that color. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm kind of on the ledge. I, I got some time to decide on on that. And it's not one of those things that's a huge rush because it's not something that I, I'm seeing that's like, oh, my gosh, I have to have these. So maybe, maybe not. A little ho-hum. Yeah. What about well, you, Terrence? I'm, well, I'm impressed that they were able to add the active noise cancellation. My assumption was in order to get the active noise cancellation, that'd be something that cups your ears completely. Yeah. Or the soft tips right. that actually get into your ear. Yeah, but, create that seal. Yeah. Right, right. The the ability for Apple to promote that without that seal is pretty impressive. That was the most thing I saw. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I thought so too. I, and a lot of people I was seeing in chats and stuff were saying the same thing. I'll be curious how well it works compared to the AirPods. Maybe that, or the AirPods Pro, that maybe that is the differentiator is that it works, but maybe not as good as it's having not as that great. seal. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I also think that the, the hearing aid uh, addition by software upgrade to the AirPods Pro is a really big step uh, and something that's going to be very helpful for a lot of people because it's over the counter. You don't need a prescription for it. You just take the the in uh, earpods test. I am curious why it's only the pro. Like, is that a business decision or is there some technology in the pro because of the beefier chip that it needs to have? Like, could you have I'm put that in maybe the pro for? I'm thinking maybe it's the seal thing you were just talking about when it yeah, comes maybe. to the noise cancellation mm -hmm. to see how good it is compared to the to the AirPod 4 to the AirPod Pro. I'm thinking that seal may give it an extra layer of of depth um, mm -hmm. when it comes to using it as a hearing aid. Yeah, that's quite possible. It's probably the seal. And All right, it, normalizes, it normalizes people with hearing aids, you know, yeah. that, that have that as well. Well, that's one thing they said in the Verge Live blog. They're like, we are going to normalize people wearing AirPods now. <laughs> if you're, yeah, yeah, we sure you know, because <laughs> it doesn't look it doesn't look as obvious to stick some AirPods in when you need to use your hearing aid. So it normalizes hearing aids. But it also you're going to like see people just wearing AirPods around the yeah. whole time. Yeah. Uh, let's check out the mailbag before we leave. Uh, Christopher wrote in, I was listening to you talk about Jen to Jen Briney about military repair contracts. We were talking to her last week about the right to repair being applied to the military. At least there's a bill in the U.S. Congress to do so. Uh, Christopher says, I've been in the Navy working on helicopters for 18 years. In the early years of the MH60S and 60R, the two versions of the H60 currently in use by the Navy, we did not have access to the schematics for the internal communication system because the government hadn't included it in their contract. Whenever we had to diagnose problems, we would have to call a Lockheed Martin rep to come and literally just read a schematic that he had and tell us which wires to check. Eventually the government sorted things out and we have the wiring diagrams now. Keep up the great work. Christopher, thanks for the on the ground report on that. And also thank you, Nika and Terrence for uh, chatting Apple announcements with us today. Uh, Nika, it's always good to have you on Mondays. And a funny story, we actually had you planned to come on this Monday before Apple planned this right. announcement. Uh, if people want to keep up with what you're doing, where should they go? 
You can find me pretty much at Tech Savvy Diva all over the internet. Um, also, you can check out Terrence and I's uh, pod, um, Apple-centric podcast, Snobble Westcast. Uh, we record on Wednesdays um, live if you're a Patreon supporter or if you catch the uh, regular feed on every Friday. So definitely check us out, especially this week. We'll be going a little bit more in depth on what we saw on the Apple announcement this week. Oh yeah, I will not miss that. Uh, Terrence, obviously Snob OS, what else? Uh, Snob OS, what else you got going on? Yep, in addition to the Snob OS cast, myself, Rob Dunwood, and uh, Stephanie Humphrey also host the Tech John, where we talk all things tech from a African American perspective. So definitely check us out on that. And like Tom mentioned, I'm the other half of the Snob OS cast. So uh, we'll have I'll have a good reason to be caught up. <laughs> on everything that goes on <laughs> in preparation for our show on Wednesday. Fantastic. Patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. We're going to talk more about the Apple announcement form, you know, and, and what we thought of the announcement, how it was delivered, the this kind of pre-record, but also having a live audience sort of thing. Uh, we'll talk about that. And, and Terrence has a stunning admission. So if you're a, a patron, stick around for that. You can also watch the show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 20 hundred UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Sarah Lane. Talk to you then. DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>